cows. I'd like to say I've never not noticed them, but how would I know? Back when they were ubiquitous, they surrounded Columbus and I might have missed a few. Lowell, recounting an ordinary day, says, from a train we saw cows. That's how it was. From a car, if dad was driving, he'd point them out and we'd hold our noses and moo. It's no coincidence that my two favorite campsites in all of California are hidden in voluptuous hills with cows grazing their flanks and rumps and hips. As if the storybook farms I grew up with are down in the dell with the barn and the silo and a smiling Mr. Sun. I've insinuated myself among them so well that they've rocked my van at night, their rough heads rubbing old Betsy in the brisket, a bull's face in moonlight mooning in the window. It's no coincidence that having dug the sole of my van, I gave it a cow's name. I don't know their source, but poems come with a particular attentiveness to the sound and shape of words. Actually, I do know the source of this one. The deadpan vowels of Lowell's from a train we saw cows. Of course he did. All post-war poets did. Even the three-year-old poet mooing in the back seat. There's a joke to be made here about moos and mews, but I'm not about to make it. Downtown San Jose, December at night. I can't get over the man sleeping on the sidewalk long before midnight, but already cold, and he, without a blanket, curled on his side on the sidewalk, his hands tucked between his thighs, his head propped on all he had in a day pack. I wondered, where was the blanket? How hard could it be to cover this man on a downtown windswept sidewalk? He was snoring, but it's absurd to impute any comfort in this, any meaning except how would I feel on my side on a sidewalk outside a poetry reading in the cold, I who can't stand arbitrariness. The problem was he was far from the only one. He was one of a dozen on the sidewalk between the poetry reading and my van. Two blocks. And when my Starter ignited, I was overjoyed, and when the sure directions in a confident mechanical voice ushered me all the way to a friend's warm bed 
in Santa Cruz. I was overjoyed. I felt like I was because I could not forget him. But thank the gods I was not that man. I made it to Santa Cruz that night and halfway home the next day with two sleeping bags and three blankets in my van. This poem is kind of a Taoist manifesto and I wrote it camping in my van in a side canyon of the Cuyama Valley up in Santa Barbara County. <clears throat> Part of a painting. So painterly, the view up canyon. Am I in the painting? Have I some function in a composition? Do wild eyes see and wonder what purpose he serves that man in his van? Part of a painting sounds fine. Just daub me in there in the corner. Inconsequential brush stroke ink slash in a Chinese scroll. Make me a boatman crossing the river Dow. Centuries from now, you reading this, I'm here, I'm fine. All these years, stick figure standing on water, steering a raft raising a stick hand to say hello. Solstice. I was reading a, a book of Jim Harrison's poems and it happened to be Solstice and I came across his poem titled Solstice and I believe in his poem there is a dog. I don't have a dog so Solstice, if I had a dog, an old dog, I would drive up the mountain road. I would take a long walk, let her run and chase quail. It's not like we catch quail at our age. It's all about the chase, or in my case, the memory of the chase. Dogs don't think about young or old. They follow their noses wherever. I remember what that's like, though. When we meet someone we fancy, we keep our noses out of each other's private parts, at least at first. At last, we find a place in the shade, me and my old dog. We like the view from here. Summer will dry up that temporary lake. I remember a solstice long ago, moonlight and wet skin. She looks at me, then at the lake, then back to me until it's time to go. She knows what's coming. We make our way down the dry creek bed, me and my imaginary dog, for a swim. All the way down, she sniffs out life. She sniffs out death. Don't tell me it isn't real. Don't tell me today or that night long ago are not real. I see them so clearly, the lake, the moonlight, the girl, the dog too, I see her, the dog taking a 
flat out leap into water. The Beatles on Ed Sullivan. You'd think the memory would fade, but this I ever more clearly see. I am six at my Aunt Ruth's house, not really my aunt. Archie or Oakey, anyway, down home, be aproned, beloved babysitter. What a blessing. Her house on the outskirts. I am on the floor, on a carpet or rug, just below and to the right of the black and white screen. All the lights out except the TV. I take in the screams with uncritical wonder. Dawn of consciousness, Tulsa, Oklahoma, February 64, and even I sense everything's changing. My earliest memories have a joyful soundtrack. How have I lost sight of this fact? It feels so right now. Hold me tight with its Roy Orbison rhythm. Defines ever after how perfect even a B-side can be. That was 59 years ago when I was six. My lifelong petulance comes down to this. I peaked too soon. <laughs>